Hi, I'm Amber and welcome to the Lone Star Keto Podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us, Kylie Burton. She is a functional medicine doctor and we are going to be talking about the thyroid. Yes, that important little thing called thyroid. Welcome, Kylie. Welcome. Thanks, Amber. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to share information that nobody knows about this all important gland that gets blamed for just about everything under the sun. That's a true story. And I hear that yeah. all the time and I'm learning more and more that maybe we wouldn't be so, shouldn't be so quick to jump on that. But first of all, can you just give us a little bit of your background, just a brief description of, of, of you know, your health background, your, your medical background, and also what exactly is a functional doctor? How is that different from a typical practitioner? Yeah. So I'd say 10 years ago, graduated with my bachelor's degree in nutrition. And I love this idea of food helping our health. Only I was getting inundated with the RDA values, the food pyramid, all that junk that I've now thrown out the window and into functional medicine world where it's all about what is actually causing your health concerns. I always like to tell people, I don't give a crap what your diagnosis is, whether you have one or you don't, I don't care. I want to know what's causing your body to portray those symptoms. And if they fall underneath an umbrella that can then be determined, determined a diagnosis. Great. If they don't great, I don't care. Think about this chronic fatigue syndrome. What does that tell you? It tells you, Oh, you're tired. Great. I already knew that fibromyalgia. What does it tell you? Joint pain, insomnia, fatigue. Great. What's causing it? Fibromyalgia doesn't tell me anything about the cause, right? So that's this thinking of beyond the diagnosis. Hence my podcast title is beyond the diagnosis because I don't care what your diagnosis is. And and it's this mindset shift of stop searching for a diagnosis and start searching for more of the why behind things. And this thyroid gets a big piece of that, whether it's hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, or you swear you have a thyroid problem, but every time you get labs done, they come back normal. We're going to dive into all of those. And not only are you going to know what your labs really say when it comes to the thyroid, but you'll know exactly what you need to do to help your thyroid flourish without treating your thyroid. I love that. Okay. So what is a functional doctor? Functional doctor gets to the bottom of your health concerns. We under, we discover the root cause is one of this. And, and this gets a big time issue as well, because say, you know, what causes headaches in Google, you're going to get a lot of different responses because there's not just one pure sole reason of what's causing a headache. There's not one pure reason of what's causing blood high blood pressure. That would make the supplement industry even more larger, larger than it is. Because everybody claims, you know, well, I took this and it helped me with my headaches, or I took this and I was able to lose weight, whether it's a supplement or a pharmaceutical or dietary change, there's not a one size fits all program. And that's where a lot of functional medicine gets falls into the culprit. We're, we're so trained as doctors of any background to figure out a diagnosis. And then based off of that diagnosis, what's the protocol following it? And with functional medicine, we have to get rid of that stuff. Whether you have a diagnosis or you don't, it's not going to tell me really anything. What I want to know is how do you feel? How long have you felt that way? What have you tried? What's worked? What hasn't worked? And then more importantly for me, what do the numbers say? Those labs that we always get told are quote normal. Yeah. We're like, I want to know what normal feels like. That's where the numbers really teach me, you know, are we dealing with something in systemic systemic, like an infection that's wrecking havoc on the thyroid that's wrecking havoc on your joints, leading you to joint pain in the NRA that's wrecking havoc on your nervous system and leading you down the road of MS, whatever it is, what's the underlying root cause and it's multiple causes. That's the other fault. 
So we all, we get in our mindset that says, okay, there's one cause for everything. What's my one cause? Well, one, we're all different. And two, there's multiple causes because our body is multiple systems that work together for the greater good. That's how my approach is. And that's why I can help pump someone who said that they've been to a functional medicine doc or they've been to a naturopath or they've been to a health coach and they've done all of the dietary elimination things. And now they're just at their wits end and not getting any better. And the coolest part is I'm going to teach you how to read your thyroid panel right here and right now. So go grab your pencils, go grab your papers and let's walk through this. I've got mine. (laughs) (laughs) Are you ready, Amber? I am ready. I am super, super excited about this. So what Kylie is going to do is she's going to take over now and she's going to basically do kind of like a a presentation and she's going to share the screen and um, show you some things visually as well as, as her talking. And then at the end, if I have any more questions, then we'll do the question answer thing. So Kylie, take it away. All right. Perfect. Okay. As we walk you through this, as I walk you through this, both on the audio and on the video, Uh, make notes because when you write this out, it makes so much sense. And this gland that we complicate so much from a practitioner standpoint, from a health coach standpoint, from the lay person, just trying to figure out what it is on Google, this will make so much more sense on why either one, your thyroid is still having problems despite the medications, despite the supplementation and, or, or two, if you are going from, you know, I'm, I'm on levothyroxine hundred milligrams. Now I went back to my doc and now I'm on 50 milligrams and they just can't get a hold of my TSH number. Or I have all these thyroid symptoms still nothing's being done. I've been told my thyroid labs are normal or I have Hashimoto's like there's so many scenarios when it comes to the thyroid, but let's make this thing so, so simple. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to think about the thyroid as one piece of a system. And that system has three key components. And here's our drawing part. Make sure I get to my screen real well. So in this three key system, we're going to draw three circles. And at the very top of the system, the very top of the totem pole is this thing we're going to call H. And H stands for hypothalamus. It's part of our brain. H will then talk to P. P stands for pituitary. It is a little tiny itty bitty gland about an inch big. If you were to draw a line down the center of your head, both directions, Where those lines cross, literally the center of your head, is where that gland sits. It's this little guy. P will then talk to T, which is our thyroid. The way P talks to T is this lovely hormone we all know as TSH. And that is the number one lab marker that our doctors will run to determine our thyroid health. Here's the problem. TSH is not a thyroid marker. It gets produced by the pituitary. So really your TSH marker tells you how good P is doing, whether he's doing good at producing TSH or he's not. Here's the other problem with TSH. The normal lab range on any given lab is typically 0.5 to 5.5. Now that's a pretty big range. I like to give the example of, if you were to try to find your favorite restaurant somewhere between California and New York, good luck. But that's what we do with this lab and with this range. We're literally trying to say for each individual, what is your ideal TSH marker where you feel the best at? And we're going to throw it out somewhere inside, somewhere inside the U.S. and just say, go, good luck trying to find it. That's what that 0.5 to 5.5 range is. But if we can take that range that's here and we can make it smaller 
And we can say now people who feel good, have energy, can lose weight, have healthy, strong hair, regular bowel movements, brain fog's not a thing. Now we're looking at a range of 1.8 to three. So we're gonna not worry about this range. That 0.5 to 5.5, throw it out the window. Now I'm gonna caveat this because your doctor does not follow this functional range. That's what we call it. So if you were to go to your doctor and say, hey, my TSH is low, because I'm teaching you what the functional range is, they're gonna laugh at your face. They're gonna say, no, your TSH looks good. You should feel fine. It's all in your head, right? Mm -hmm. This range I'm teaching you, write it down. TSH is between 1.8 and 3. That's the ideal range. I don't come up with those ranges. Um, his name is Dr. Karazian. He's one of those guys that has a million and a half letters next to his name. Someone had to do the research and someone had to come up with these ranges. They, he did, the, him and his team did it about 20 years ago. We've been using them ever since. So it's not my range, it's his. But it works very well. We all use them for those of us who read labs like I do. Okay, so now if we say my TSH is 1.1, well, based off of the functional range, that's low, but it's still normal. There's a difference, right? So that being low, we then have to think, if my TSH is low, what's wrong with P? Because he's the one making it. So if my if P is having a hard time making TSH, what's making P struggle? And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is this lovely word called stress. And the second reason is this lovely word called inflammation. Now, Amber, I don't know about you, but a lot of people, when I say, if there's a way for you to make your life less stressful, what would it be? You would laugh at me and say, um, good luck. <laughs> 2021, there's no way to leave. And maybe if I completely go off grid and I turn off social media and I turn off the news, maybe I can make it less stressful, right? Maybe, yeah. What I love, cause I'm that way as well, it would be really hard to make my life less stressful. It's just, we live in a stressful world. But if we could have find something on the inside of our body that's causing us stress, chances are that same thing causing stress is also causing inflammation. Now we can get rid of the source of inflammation rather than just taking loads and loads of turmeric. And we can get rid of the source of the inside stressor so our body can now handle all the outside stressors more easily, right? Yes, I'm loving this, yes. <laughs> now, here's the coolest part. And I'm gonna teach you guys this because a lot of times this internal stressor, also the source of inflammation, is what I like to deem, and this often goes missed, so all you practitioners out there, pay attention. All you people who want to know what your normal labs are really telling you, I'm going to teach you. So this infection, we can determine based off of a CBC. That CBC is the most common blood work we're going to get. It's the number one lab that your doctor takes basically for anything. Now, I can almost also guarantee you that you were told your labs were normal. And we want normal labs. We don't want to be not normal because if they're not normal, now we have kidney disease, liver disease, heart failure, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes. We have some type of disease that they can then say, now you need a statin for the rest of your life. Now you need thyroid meds for the rest of your life. Whatever it is, the uh, Humira for you know, RA, because the lab was not normal. So now you have this disease and now you have to manage it. I'm not, we're not managing things in my office with my clientele, with my patients. Uh, we're going to get you back to survival 
are out of survival mode into thriving mode. And I don't, I don't care what the background is. Um, for example, I have a lady with MS and she literally just biked 50 miles with her husband a couple of weeks ago when previously a year ago, she was crying at the finish line because her body hurt so bad and she didn't think she'd ever be able to do that again. And then she just killed the 50 mile bike race. So we're not talking about managing stuff here. We're talking about what's really causing a cascade of symptoms because these internal stressors, this internal source of inflammation is most often some type of, an, of an infection. And those infections are systemic. They wreak havoc on everything, not just your thyroid. Okay. Amber, are you ready for this lab marker? I am, I am so ready. <laughs> in your labs. Everybody has it in their labs. This lab marker is called the white blood cell count. Mm. It's the very top marker on what we know as the CBC. Promise you, you want it to be normal, but if it falls to where it's less than five or it's greater than eight, we're dealing with some type of low grade infection. Low grade, not something that you're gonna go run to your doctor and say, hey, I want you to test me for H. pylori because I think I have a bacterial infection. That test will come back negative. Because it's not strong enough to elicit a positive test result. Mm. The best one to do an example is, is Epstein-Barr virus, also known as mono. So many people fight chronic fatigue and they want to blame their thyroid because it's really easy to blame. And then, then we get put on medication or we take the next supplement or whatever the story is, but nothing really helps our chronic fatigue. It might help us grow our hair back a little bit postpartum or dial in the brain fog just a little bit. But as far as an energy standpoint, the infection is what's killing it. And the Epstein-Barr virus, also known as mono, is the most common that I've seen, and I've seen a thousand labs at this point, that not only affects chronic fatigue, but it instigates Hashimoto's. In fact, 95% of Hashimoto's begins with a low grade virus that just continues to burden the, the immune system. So finally, at some point, it's going to say, you know what? Screw it. I've been fighting for so long. I'm just going to start fighting and attacking anything. And whatever it attacks is what your genes tell it to attack. So if you have autoimmune disease that runs in the family, like my family has Parkinson's, if we let our immune system fight and fight and fight and fight and fight for so long without relieving some of the burden, like relieving a low-grade infection, and at some point, it's going to say, I'm just going to start attacking the nervous system because that's what it tells me to attack. Hashimoto's, it's going to start attacking the thyroid. Does this all make sense? Yeah. Can I ask just one question really quick? Cause I'm dying here. Okay. What if you had, um, mono when you were a teenager and you've continued to note, like through the years you get lower and lower and lower and lower and lower energy. Okay. It was not me, but my husband is struggling and yeah. you know, his labs have come back pretty, pretty normal, you know, pretty good. he's taken and I mean, you know, within reason, I mean, he has a few issues here, but, um, he did have mono like severe in high school, like severe, severe. Yeah. So many people will say, well, I remember getting mono at like 17 years old and the patient with the MS, her son is he's 17 years old. He's a, he was a junior year. So this was last year when he was a junior in high school, he's literally falling asleep in class. And it's like, she's like, he sleeps just fine at night. It's not like he's sleep deprived. And I, I pulled his labs and his marker for mono and for, for a viral counts so were through the roof. And I said at that marker, if he were to go get an Epstein-Barr virus test, it would come back positive. It's just nobody ran the test yet. Mm. So she's like, okay, I'm curious. So we're, they went back, we ran the test, sure enough, came back positive. So he was fighting mono. Um, not fighting it anymore because we've kicked it to the curb and made it dormant. But 
with your husband and what you can determine, all of you who are listening, is if you've had a history of mono, chances are your body is still fighting it. Mm. Think, ask your husband, Fisco, when you got diagnosed, what did they do? Well, they tell you to go home and sleep for three months and say, good luck. Right? They, they don't know what to do with virus, hence why we're in 2021 and dealing with what we're dealing with. <laughs> Whereas in my world, I treat viruses all the time. So it's like, okay, great. We know what to do. But viruses wreak havoc and infections wreak havoc. So when he, and like so many people in his shoes, when they got diagnosed at such an early age, and it's just probably been a low grade virus where sometimes, and you can tell me if this is right or wrong for him, but sometimes he has great days where he feels more energetic. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he has days where he's like, I'm struggling to get out of bed mm-hmm. and, yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what happens with these infections. When, when a virus is like, okay, I'm going to be more active today. Bad days. Okay. I'll, I'll chill today. You can have a good day today. Wow. Right. So this is where these, these play a role and take a look at his numbers. If his white blood cell count is less than five, or if it's greater than eight, we're dealing with some type of infection. Mm. Now, what type of infection it can get a little bit more complicated. What also like he has had, he had the chicken pox. Okay. Most, most of us, my age did, it's not a big deal, but he's had shingles twice, twice. You need some bivy. Bivy is my antiviral supplement. Okay. I'll tell you afterwards what I would do. For yeah, him. definitely. Let's um, talk about that. This is yeah, fascinating. Yes. Okay. Keep going. Keep He's going. fighting viruses multiple and, it, and it's very common. Um, I can say, you know, a monocyte count or a lymphocyte count tells me if we're dealing with viruses, I can't tell you which one. And I can't tell you if there's one or multiple, I can tell you that we are always fighting viruses and we are always fighting bacterial infections. And we are always fighting parasites It's just a matter of, can our immune system keep the pace or is it going to be overburdened and turn into an autoimmune disease of some way, shape or form later on in life? This is fascinating. Fascinating. I know it's super cool. I mean, you thought we were talking about the thyroid, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This is great. This, This is how you treat the thyroid by not treating the thyroid. But ultimately going back to our three piece puzzle with the thyroid, the three pieces of the system. Once we can make that infection dormant or or in the case of a bacterial infection, get enough of the bad guys gone and the good guys back in. Once we can kick that to the curb, now our internal stressor is gone and our internal source of inflammation is gone. Think of how much relief that gives your body from hormones, from digestion from nervous system, kicking the brain fog. I mean, kicking the, uh, having the ability to lose weight, to get pregnant. I mean, the possibilities are endless once we get rid of that infection because it's wrecking havoc on everything. Okay. So now we've done that. We've gotten rid of the infection. Our TSH is, it's boosted back up. We're feeling good. It's say it's, it went from 1.1 to 1 point or, or 2.1, which now communicates with the thyroid. The thyroid produces the hormone called T4. So when it comes to taking a thyroid lab panel, I would be sure that TSH gets taken, which always does, free T4 and free T3. The reason I'm scared why, to hear these because <laughs> I'm in the not, normal range. So I'm a little bit, <laughs> what's the functional <laughs> range now? T4, right. Gets produced by the thyroid. So if you're not getting a T4 marker, T, there's total T4 and there's free T4. I prefer free T, T4 because of this exact method. The marker for it. pretty sure I don't have this memorized, but I'm pretty sure it's one point or it's 1.0 to 2.0. So one to two, that's the range. 
And then the two, free two, three marker is from three to four. I'll check that, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's the range. So say your, your free T4 is like 0.8 or 0.7 or like 0.9. It's just a little bit low. Or your free T4 is like 17, something crazy. When you see fluctuations so in, in any of the thyroid markers that are really good fluctuations. Um, for example, I got an email today with someone sending me their follow-up thyroid labs and her history was like, she literally told me, she's like, I, the endocrinologist says, I don't have Hashimoto's. I don't believe her because I know what you teach me and what I've learned with your, your programs. She just didn't take the antibody marker. So we don't know, but her TSH was going from like 0.17 to 21 to 16 to three. Like when you're seeing those crazy TSH markers, make sure you're running these additional ones, which are the TPO and the TG antibodies, because they will determine whether or not your immune system is actually attacking your thyroid. And that's the real problem. It's not your thyroid. So in an ideal thyroid lab panel, it would include your TSH, your free T4, your free T3, your TPO and TG antibodies. Write that down. Okay. Right. What is the difference then? What is a TPEX in a, in a TGAB? Is that those aren't the same I'm guessing or. Okay. All right. Those are additional markers. This is oh, just the bottom line. Get all this information because then you can map out your plan and you can say, you know, what? I've been on thyroid medication for 20 years. I don't even know why I'm on it anymore. I just am on it because I don't know what else to do. Now you do, now you do know what else to do. And we can get into thyroid meds too, because most of your thyroid meds are T3, which T3, as you guys all now know, is the bottom of the totem pole. So if we can fix everything upstream, everything downstream feels better. No thyroid medication needed. Makes sense. There's one more, two more pieces here. Free T4 gets converted into free T3 in two places, the gut and the liver. So if your gut is dealing with some, once again, infections, it's gonna have a hard time taking T4 and converting it into T3. If your liver is overburdened by a heavy toxic load, it's gonna have a hard time getting it from T4 to T3. The liver also plays a role with heavy, painful periods, hmm. but can eventually get diagnosed as endometriosis. It's all correlated here. When, when you think, I have a lot of women who are like, my period, I, I die during that week. I dread it. You know, life gets put on hold because of their period. Their options are birth control, hysterectomy. Those are their options. Not anymore. Start here because that estrogen level is too high and the liver is having a hard time taking care of all of its other responsibilities. So your estrogen just gets left behind and it continues to keep going higher and higher and higher. Your periods keep getting worse and worse and worse until eventually you might have some growths and they'll say, oh, well, you have endometriosis. Do you want us to remove your, remove your uterus? And you say, no, I'm 23 years old. I want to have kids crazy, but it's happening all the time. So there's your thyroid. There's the four factors destroying your thyroid in which your th doctor doesn't even know. The internal stressor, the source of inflammation, your gut, and your liver. Those are those four factors that are destroying your thyroid, despite all of the treatment geared for the thyroid. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty mind blowing, is, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's encouraging, but then it's like, well, crap. Now my like T3 and T4, I'm kind of a little iffy on the levels because I was pretty happy about it because, you know, it was enough into the normal. I figured it was normal. So now I'm like, oh, dang. Yeah. Yeah. The thyroid gets blamed for a lot. And a lot of times the thyroid treatments don't help. 
So we're, we're us moms, we're finally, you know, we're finally putting energy and effort into take, can, taking care of ourselves. And then years down the road, we haven't gotten anywhere. True story. So that's all the things that you need to know about your thyroid to have a successful. Okay. Talk a little bit about um, the thyroid medication for those who are on it and like, what are the benefits? Like, when should you really take it? And, you know, those kind of things. Okay. So I have to caveat this. I don't have prescription rights. So I can never tell people to get off of your prescriptions or they start taking them. What I can teach you is how to put how to put the power back in your hands and you can make the decision, but definitely work with the pharmacist, work with your doc who's prescribing the thyroid meds and help and, and tell them, you know, you want to get off of this taper off of it for one and go slow. So say you're taking a hundred milligrams of levothyroxine. You want to back it down to just go slow. Talk to your pharmacist about it. Okay. Now, when you're navigating the thyroid meds, a lot of times people will say, or, and if you've experienced this, here's why I felt really terrible on Synthroid. I feel really good on levothyroxine or I was on nature throid and it just got recalled. And so now I'm on armor throid and it's not doing so well. Well, there are, uh, all additives into each one of those. And those additives are different. So for example, um, Synthroid and levothyroxine, one of them has gluten, the other one has corn. Well, if your body has a hard time fighting gluten, or if it doesn't like gluten or your gluten sensitivity, it's going to not do well on the one with gluten in it. My God. So look at the, th- look at the additives inside your thyroid medication. And if you need to switch, look at those two. The second part is, don't ask me why this is, but the 50 milligram tablet in most thyroid meds do not have any dyes in them. So say your body is like, I don't like red 44 or blue 14 or yellow seven, whatever the, the dye is like that makes the capsule or that makes the powder pretty. Only the 50 milligram tablet doesn't have it. So you might want to look into if you're taking 150 milligrams of levothyroxine, maybe instead of taking 150 milligram one capsule, you take three of the 50 milligram capsules because now you're getting prescriptions that are dye free, just a little bit less for your body to have to worry about. There's things like that, that you can work around the thyroid med world. My goal with most people is to get them off of it by doing exactly what we just did. And if sometimes they need to stay on it and that's totally okay. But it's the fact that we are so many people are on thyroid meds just because they don't know what else to do. They don't really feel any better on them. They don't feel worse but they just are, they've ran out of options. So that, that is fascinating. And, and like my mom, she cannot have gluten and she is on a thyroid medication and it just doesn't seem to be doing any good at all. And oh my gosh. Now I'm going to have to go research that medication because she was <laughs> on one of the na- natural ones. I can't remember the name of it, but it's nature of thyroid then she couldn't get it anymore. And so then she had to go to a synthetic one. And ever since then, it has just not been a good thing. And now I am curious because she's got every allergy, every sensitivity, good guy. She is just one big walking inflammation. God only knows what she's had in there. She's had the mono. She's had, she's had just about everything you can imagine and just a mess. And so, and she's been diagnosed as Hashimoto's and all that. So now I'm like, gosh, I'm going to, I'm going to research her meds now. (laughs) Let's do it. Amber, let's talk about Hashimoto's for a minute because Hashimoto's is autoimmune, right? It's when the immune system is attacking the thyroid, which is also why, for example, your mom, she's taking thyroid medication 
Is she feeling anything? Is it making a difference? Probably not because the thyroid is not the problem. The immune system is the problem. Mm. It's what's attacking the thyroid. And And think about it this way. Your thyroid is like a, like a toddler trying to learn how to swim. And it's just, they're just trying to keep their head above the water and just doggy pedal as fast as they can. Your thyroid's doing the same thing. It's just trying to keep its head above the water when there are so many pieces of the puzzle or, or things tugging it down, trying to pull it under the water and sink it. And yet we get, we blame it for brain fog and fatigue and not inability to lose weight, and constipation and you know, hair loss, and brittle nails. I mean, the list goes on and on and on what these thyroid problems are. Your thyroid gland, it's just one piece of the system. And that system is impacted like the gut and the liver component. It's impacted by other systems. When you can get all systems playing nicely then playing nicely together, that's when you're like, okay, I'm living life now. I'm not just surviving. Yes. And that is always my goal. I feel everybody deserves to have that, to have that quality of life, to be happy, to be healthy. And I don't think, honestly, we even know anymore what it's like to be healthy. We don't have a clue. We think we feel normal, but it's because we've always felt that way and we don't know any different, but a lot of us, what we feel, it is not normal, maybe common. It's not normal. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other part too, is our bodies are incredible. Mm -hmm. They do some amazing things. Like think about it. We're just sitting here, our heart's pumping, pumping blood all over the, the body. The lungs are doing their thing. My cells, my cells are regenerating. Like we're doing, it's doing some incredible things. And yet we really focus on and we torment it for the bad things it does. And it's just like coaching. When you're, when you're a coach, I coached volleyball for many, many years. I played volleyball for many, many years as a coach. It's very easy to pick out the negative. It is really hard to pick out the positive. You have to make a diligent effort to pick out the positive. So inside my membership, we have a a mindset coach that comes in because you can only do so much physical treatment until you change what's between the years. Yes, (laughs) that's my approach. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of certifications over the summer dealing with with that exact thing because I do believe that is so incredibly important. And yes, I did the mindset coaching too, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. We just get Amazing. told, I mean, we are, we are ingrained to look for a diagnosis, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to thyroid. You want to know if you're hypothyroid or hyper or Hashimoto's or you want something to be wrong. And then we're always defeated. And it's like, my labs come back normal. They might be <laughs> normal, but they're not ideal. And when you can look at the right ideal ranges and say, now I know if I can get my numbers to this. I'm going to feel better whether I have a diagnosis or not. Now I'm in charge and then tell your body. Here's the other problem. And you know, this from a mindset perspective too. How many times do we catch ourselves saying, well, I have Hashimoto's. I have fibromyalgia. I have RA. And we're telling our bodies this and our minds this over and over and over and over again. Whereas we could say at one point in my life, I fought Hashimoto's. I've beat it now. That's what we can do. Yeah. Love that. Instead of just telling our brains, because our brains don't know any better. It's not what we tell it. So if we say, you know, it's hot, that's really expensive. That's the only thing our brain knows. Or if we say I'm worth it, I'm going to do this. So that I stop spending money on all my zillions of co-pays and my zillions of lab tests there you go where right it's just a different mindset that you have to take in an approach like this and i i teach a thousand doctors every week i'm having to teach them you know this isn't they always ask for protocols like what's your thyroid protocol there is no thyroid protocol because you are different amber than your mother 
And your <laughs> thyroid's going to be doing things different than your mother's thyroid. Um, there are steps that we can take, like if you tackle the infection and if you clean up your gut and if you help relieve the burden of your liver and give it the supportive ingredients it needs to produce the right detox pathways. Like you can do those things as a general guideline, but thinking about, I need something to fix my thyroid. That's wrong. That is so well said. And this excites me, but at the same time, I'm like, Oh God. (laughs) So that's awesome. All you have to do is come learn how on the podcast, be on the diagnosis. There you Dr. go. Kylie and, I'll, and I'll teach you all the ins and outs as far as treatment, but also we go into more like when it comes into the white blood cell count. Okay. Okay. Great. My white blood cell count is 3.3. I know I'm fighting some type of infection. What is it? We go into more of those labs. It's just, it gets a little bit complicated and messy. And, and you've, have you already released that podcast by the way? Yeah, we're, we're going to be a okay. hundred episodes in at the end of the month, at awesome. the end of this season. So we are in season three right now, just started at the beginning of August and that will run through Thanksgiving. I do two episodes a week. They come out every Tuesday and every Thursday. And uh, I I love doing that. I'm sure you do too. Oh, I do. I love it. And y'all, I will put everything below and uh, just real quick before we go, um, do you take uh, virtual appointments? Are you yeah. allowed to do that? Yes. So yes. somebody, anybody can contact you and get help. Yeah. I've actually been doing thing, everything virtual for two years now. So I was virtual mm. before it was cool to be virtual, but I, the best place to learn more is the podcast and then just come join the membership. I actually have a private podcast coming inside the membership where we will go through the lab. So next time your doctor says, you know, your labs look normal and you can say, okay, thanks. Give me a copy of them. And I'm going to go home and I'm going to read the labs myself. No medical training required. But if you are a medical physician, come get in anyways. <laughs> and so you can read the labs the right way. <laughs> I love it. Well, Kylie, thank you so, so much for coming on. And while y'all are here, subscribe to my channel and go follow Kylie. I will have all her stuff below and stay tuned because she's coming back and we're going to talk about gut health. So if you enjoyed this, Oh, I can't even wait to see what she's going to do with the gut health part. So be sure to check out that and check out the links below. Perfect. Thanks, Amber. Thank you so much, Kylie. Bye. Bye.